Hi, I'm Paul Chacha. I'm a tour guide here with the Office of Admissions at Hobart Williams Smith Colleges. I'm sorry you weren't able to make it to campus today, uh, so I'm going to be the one who's going to be leading you around for a little bit. I'm a tricky little freak, I'm a killer, you won't see me as a sliver down the street I make noise and I'm poised like a train, as your poise I make heat When I tweet I am the real McCoy All the lies that you say to me, you better pray for me, you better kill me or pay for me So you just saw Seneca Lake, which is one of the deepest of the Finger Lakes Actually is the deepest, uh, but now we're gonna go into Trinity Hall and uh, look at some on-campus offices in the offices of Career Services um, in Trinity Hall here at Hobart and William Smith. Um, what's awesome about Career Services here at HWS is that that office essentially exists to help you with any point in the career process, whether you're just starting to look for internships, whether you already have an idea of what you want to do professionally, um, or if you're just curious. Um, so their big main focus is getting students placed in different jobs, different internships, things like that. And over here on this board, um, we have a visual of where different students have gone um, over the past year with respect to different jobs or internships, whether they're domestic or abroad. Um, you see a lot in the Northeast, some out West, and like I said, some abroad. Uh, but this is an idea of what you can do. You can do as many as you want. Um, it's not restricted to your major. You can do an internship in something that's completely unrelated to your academic field. Um, or if you're just curious. And then that right there is the actual Career Services Office where you can use the alumni database. Um, you can have access to any of our awesome Career Services counselors. You can do a mock interview. They'll look at your resume, your cover letter, pretty much anything you need to put your best foot forward when you're actually applying for those types of jobs. Welcome to the second floor of Trinity Hall. Uh, we're in CECL, which is short for the Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning. Um, you can pretty much just shorten that down to community service. Um, this is where all things community service go on at HWS, whether you're interested in doing a community outreach program um, or you're just interested in getting involved in Geneva as a whole. Um, there are a lot of awesome people in this department. I've had the privilege of working with them, whether it was through orientation um, or even just some of my own interests. Um, they do a great job coordinating everything from environmental initiatives with Jim Reba to um, Teach for America, things like that. You have a ton of different options uh, once you get in here, kind of on any scale, um, general interest. third floor of Trinity Hall, um, which is CGE, which is the Center for Global Education. Um, so pretty much any interest you have in studying abroad, this is where you'll come to get forms, get information. Um, we'll send you pretty much to every country, every continent at this point. We actually just sent our last kid to an Antarctica over winter break. Um, but if you have any interest in studying abroad, whether it's for a semester, whether it's for a year, whether it's like a three or four week winter program, whether it's a six or eight week summer program, homestay, cultural immersion, any type of a broad activity um, you're interested in doing, this is absolutely the place to do it. Um, we have a really strong program here. We're partnered with a lot of different universities that allows us to go a lot of different places and for you to kind of have the type of experience you want. You're not just necessarily going to be staying in an apartment or staying in hostels the whole time abroad. You could do a family homestay, um, you can be led with a faculty um, professor from HWS and a group of other HWS students. Um, so you can pretty much get whatever you want out of it. Here we are on the quad. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to be. Uh, usually when it's a little bit warmer out, uh, you can pretty much do anything out here, um, including work. The entire campus is wireless. Uh, but take a look behind me. Uh, this is what you get to enjoy all year round. be a part of the teacher certification program 
uh, where you can get certified to teach in five different areas, whether you're interested in special education, um, art, music, primary, secondary, um, you can do all that here. So right now we're about to go take a look at the sciences, which are right over there. But a little bit of history first, so Elizabeth Blackwell here was the first female physician and she attended Geneva Medical College, um, which is currently where the college resides. So welcome to the sciences um, here at HWS. It's actually a collection of four different buildings. Um, right now we're in um, Rosenberg Hall but it's Lansing, Napier, Eaton, and Rosenberg, um, and those will make up anything from bio to chem, um, computer science, environmental science. Um, it's not the same as the social sciences, but all those primary sciences are in here. Um, as we go farther down this hallway, you're gonna see professors' offices um, with their corresponding labs. One of the really unique things about going to a small liberal arts school is that you have the opportunity to do undergraduate research. Uh, what you can do is early as your freshman year, you can apply to be a part of a professor's research group. Um, they'll work over the course of, of winter break, sometimes the summer, um, and there'll be faculty-led projects that you do research for. Um, so this is an example of students who worked with a professor um, over the course of X amount of time. Um, and they've kind of work in tandem and what's really cool is if you're looking to go to medical school or if you're looking to go to grad school um, in the medical field to be able to say that you did undergraduate research um, or even had the opportunity to get published because your work was done in junction with a professor um, is pretty cool to be able to put on your resume. So this is Google Call. This is home to the psychology department um, as well as the registrar's office. So if you need any help, add drop classes, um, if you need to reorganize your schedule at all, this is where you'll come to do that. Um, farther to our right here is the Cellar Pub. Uh, one of three places to eat on campus that's really good. Um, it's all covered within the meal plan, so it's technically free. Um, but it's really good. They do anything from hamburgers to quesadillas to salads, paninis. Um, and there's a Starbucks down there. Alright, so welcome to the library. Um, in here you're going to find anything from books to a bunch of student services. Um, that's going to range anywhere from IT if you need any help or tech support with a laptop. Um, any electronic pretty much. Um, we also have the library research technicians, so if you're looking to do a research paper or you need help you know, with guiding or figuring out your bibliography and that stuff, um, they'll help you with that pretty much every step of the way. Um, inside we also have something in a, kind of a similar vein, the DLC, which is the Digital Learning Center. Um, so if you are taking a class that needs a different program or software, some type of computer application that you're not necessarily super comfortable with, um, you can go in there and they'll be able to help you out, give you a cheat sheet, all that fun stuff. Um, and then on the second floor is the CTL. Um, it's probably one of the biggest parts of the library, um, even though it's kind of actually the smallest. Um, you have two main factions within CTL, which are writing colleagues and teaching fellows. Both exist as kind of study mentors, whether it's to help you with your writing or it's to help you with a specific class um, in a certain academic department. So you can have a teaching fellow for bio, you can have um, certain languages and things like that, but you'll have a writing fellow if you're taking English classes. Um, or maybe if you're taking a bio class and you need to write an essay, um, writing fellows pretty much exist to help you out with every point in the writing process. Something they do for the student body once it gets cold like this. Uh, this one.
once they have the ground all leveled out, they'll actually put in an ice rink on that you can come skate, play hockey on, and go on a day if you want to. Welcome to one of our classrooms. I'm here in Stern Hall, which is one of the main academic buildings here. Um, so in here, you're going to get a little bit of everything from anthropology, sociology, political science, um, economics, media society, even some English classes are going to get taught in here. Um, if you decide to take, if you decide to come here, uh, you'll definitely take a class in here for some reason or another. This is an example of one of the upper level classrooms. Um, you'll see the seating's kind of in a circle. They're very discussion based. Um, our largest lecture hall is actually kind of across the way um, from this classroom over there. Um, and that actually seats like 45 people max. So you're really not going to be in these massive classes. Um, with the exception of probably when you're first year when you're taking a lot of intro courses to figure out what you like. Um, I went to public high school and my class sizes were around like 30, 35 kids. Um, and I came here and I was in classes still about 25. Let's check out the biggest classroom on campus. Um, so this is it. Um, like I said, this is one of those lecture halls. Um, like I said though, um, the upper level classes, um, and even getting into the 200 level, um, it's primarily discussion based. Um, you are going to have some professors who will lecture, um, but primarily because class sizes are so small, um, the teacher, the professor, excuse me, uh, more guides the conversation from what students are doing rather than just talking at you for an hour or so. Um, but this is it. This is probably where a lot of your intro anthro, intro bio, um, intro social classes will be held, um, just kind of based on the fact that it's the biggest. And once you get here first year, you're still trying to figure out um, what academic department you want to fall into. So. All right, so this is Cousins Field. Uh, this is where both Lane Smith and Hobart soccer teams play. Um, cool thing about Cousins Field is it hosted one of my favorite events that I've had here. Uh, my collegiate history was the Thrill on the Hilla. It was my freshman year, and it was cool because I actually lived on the floor with a lot of the soccer guys, which you do because everything here is so mixed. Um, but you get to like come here, get a free T-shirt. They pack you on the hill, and you watch the first fall soccer game of the semester. It's a lot of fun. So these are our tennis courts, um, these are where we have our home matches, um, but they're down, not functioning right now, um, but probably by tomorrow. Alright, so this is the edge of campus, um, the last thing you'll see here is the rest of our sports facilities. Um, so down there, that's Boswell Field, that's soccer, uh, football and lacrosse, they'll do night games. Um, those bleachers are obviously bleachers, but um, underneath those are all like the varsity locker rooms and, and things like that. Uh, you also have the field house, which has all the squash courts, tennis courts, basketball courts, athletic classrooms, all that fun stuff for Zumba, like yoga lattes, spinning, whatever you're into. Uh, but over there is the grocery store that raised me, that's Wegmans, so 5 and 20 is also where you find all of your like commercial goods, all the fast food restaurants, uh, all the stuff you want late at night. Like I was saying earlier, these are the rest of our athletic facilities, so in here are the basketball courts, the tennis courts, indoor track. Um, weight room, all the different athletic classrooms, so if you're into spinning or anything like that. Um, it's also where if you're on an athletic team, this is where you'll come to have practices during uh, the winter months. Um, other than that, this is where you get your sweat on. Center. This is essentially our equivalent to a student union. 
Um, so in here you're going to have student activities, which if you want to bring a performance or bring a club to campus, um, that's where you go. The dining hall is in here, the cafe is in here. Um, so if you're trying to eat dinner, and grab something in between classes, um, or even grab your mail, uh, you can do that in here too. This is that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them hood girls, them good girls, straight masterpieces. Styling, violin, living it up in the city. Got Chuck's on with Saint Laurent. Gotta kiss myself, I'm so pretty. I'm too hot. Call the police and the firemen. I'm too hot. Make a dragon want to retire, man. I'm too hot. Wow, what a spread. Uh, I usually go with the quinoa stuffed zucchini, um, but teach his own. Um, right now we are in Saga, which is the main dining hall on campus. Um, there's only one dining hall, so you get to see pretty much everybody um, if you're on the meal plan, which you do have to be during your first year. Uh, but over the course of the following years, you can choose 50 meals for the year 100, gold, silver, um, which I'll find out a little bit more about later. Um, but this is the main dining hall, this is where you come to eat. Oh hey, welcome to the Student Activities Office here at Hobart William Smith Colleges. Um, right now we are on the second floor of Scanling Center. So on the first floor you saw the kind of more social eating option with the cafe, um, uh, both what we offer in terms of food and both where you can like go sit and hang out, grab coffee, anything like that. Um, but now we're upstairs on the business end. This is where Student Activities is. Uh, we're actually currently in the Orientation and Student Government Office. Um, so all that stuff is located up there, up, up here, excuse me, a um, little bit farther down the hallways where you'll find actual student um, activities administrators. So they'll be able to help you if you want to bring a group to campus. Um, if you're looking to, you know, start any sort of club, this is definitely where you'll do it. Oh. This is our new performing arts center set to be done in January of 2016. Uh, whether you play an instrument, whether you like to act, you're in the musical theater, uh, or even media studies like myself, uh, there's going to be a new building dedicated to this. Here is Demarest Hall, it's home to our English and English Studies Department. Um, I'm an English major, so my advisor's office is in here, I'm taking a bunch of different classes in here. It's a pretty cool building, it's super old, it's connected to the chapel. So right behind me is Geneva Hall, um, the oldest building on campus, so back in the heyday. Um, when Hobart was founded, this was where professors ate, slept, students ate and slept, where they went to class. Um, it's also where they had fun. They used to throw cannonballs, like bowling balls, down the hallway. Um, so they're like pock marks at the end of the hallways, but that's why they built Medbury, um, which is the building we just passed over there. That's why they built it with no hallways. <laughs> 